Hi, I'm Heather from Heather Handmade. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to turn an adult t-shirt into a romper, jumpsuit, or dress for kids. Today I am releasing a new sewing pattern. It is an upcycled sewing pattern for kids and it is turning an adult t-shirt into um, a romper, a jumpsuit, or a dress. For the jumpsuit you will need to use like a woman's dress or like a maxi dress because you do need a lot of fabric for the um, long pants. But for the dress and the romper, you just need a t-shirt. This pattern is so great because you can reuse adult clothing and turn them into clothing for kids. This is one of my very favorite things to do. I've been doing it for years and years. I love reusing. Um, it makes the sewing so much easier because you get to reuse necklines and hems. So the process is a lot quicker. It's great for beginners. The great thing about this pattern is that there is a yoke at the top to make the neckline stretch better so that it's easier to get on and off for um, what, you know, like a romper when you're pulling it on and off. You can use t-shirts that you have in your closet. You can get t-shirts for cheap at a thrift store. So it's a great way to save money and be able to still sew and make clothing for your kids. The pattern is on sale. It is 20% off. You can head over there. To, um, the link is in the description. The pattern will be on sale until June 1st. So go get it while it's on sale. Don't miss it. In this video, I am showing how to make this um, green romper um, that has its shorts, but all of the techniques are exactly the same for the jumpsuit or the dress. The dress doesn't have um, the separation of le the legs at the bottom, but the technique is exactly the same. You do everything else the same, and so you can use the video to still make the dress. I'm so excited to share this pattern with you, so let's get started. For this project, you are going to need an adult t-shirt. My favorite t-shirt to use are men's t-shirts because um, they're soft, they have a lot of fabric, and um, the shape is very universal, and so it's easier to know if the pattern will fit. Will fit. You can use women's t-shirts, that's great. One thing to note is that a lot of women's t-shirts are made out of rayon or really lightweight kind of slinky materials. And so um, those are not as sturdy for something like a romper. And that is why I like using men's t-shirts. If you do want to use a women's t-shirt, just make sure it's um, mostly based out of cotton so that it will be strong enough to hold up as a dress or a romper. If you are doing the jumpsuit view and the jumpsuit is, you know, the bottom piece is a lot longer, you do have to use a dress. First thing we're going to do is cut it out. And before I cut anything, what I like to do is I put it so I can see the front and I just kind of lay the front piece. It's not like perfect. I'm not cutting it, but I just want to see how long it's going to be. And then I place either the skirt or the shorts down below to see if I'm gonna have enough space in between the two pieces. This looks like it's going to fit just fine. You can see that I'm cutting it really close um, side to side since this goes you know, from edge to edge, but this um, size, this is a size five, will work just fine on this um, medium adult shirt. I like to cut the shorts first. I find that the easiest. So I line up the hem here along the bottom, make it all smooth, make sure there's no wrinkles. Then I lay out the pattern piece like this. You can put pattern weights on if you want, and then I cut it out. Try not to cut through here from the side because you're gonna need this side for another pattern piece. So just make sure you're just cutting right where the shorts are. Then you're going to take the yoke piece and you, it says cut it on the fold. You're going to need two cut on the fold. 
So I'm just going to place it here and then flip it over to get the two long pieces instead of actually um, folding it. I could also just go like this. So then I have a fold and then I'm going to cut it out. Now for the sleeves, for the sleeves you cut the sleeves on the fold. So I'm actually going to leave the sleeve folded just like this. I'm lining up all the hems. Place the sleeve on the fold and then cut it out. What we have left to cut out is the front and the back and the easiest way to do that is I open the shirt and I actually cut through the side up through the side of the sleeve so that I can actually um, it's easier to open it up so you take your the top you're gonna line up the neckline and fold it on the center front and the center back and you've got to make sure <clears throat> that it's all like all the wrinkles underneath are smoothed out Take the front and you're going to line it up. The most important thing is that you line this front of the front piece with the center front and that you line up this shoulder point here. It doesn't matter as much if it matches this curve. So see how this is lined up and then this point is lined up. This curve doesn't match perfectly but that works out just fine and then cut it out. Now for the back, I have it folded on the center back. I take the back piece and it's the same where you want to line up the center back with the fold and this shoulder point and the curve doesn't matter as much. So I have this matched here and then this line matched here and then I'm going to cut it out. The first step is to take your yoke <clears throat> and we're going to sew it to the shoulders of the front. So you can see that these marks are for the back and these marks are the, for the front. And this is the right side. And what we're going to do is you're going to match this notch with this notch and you want this where the fold is. You want it to wrap around the neckline and then this notch will match the notch in the same spot. So you have three layers together and you're kind of sandwiching the shoulder seam in the yoke and make sure that your neckline isn't wrinkled or gathered at all. And then you're going to sew this shoulder seam. So fold the yolks up just like this. So now I have that nice um, folded smooth edge for part of the neckline. And the next thing we're going to do is sew the back shoulder seam to the yoke. And this one is not going to be wrapped, it's just going to be sewn in place. So you're going to take the shoulder and match it up so that all the marks are matched in the same spot. And here at this neckline edge, the yoke is going to come out past a little bit because the seam is, you know, farther in and you want the place where these two edges cross to be where the seam starts. Then do the same to the other side. Then you're going to sew both of these seams.
Now we need to tack that seam allowance. So if you look at the neckline, you can see that there's these two um, serger tails. It, you might not have used a serger, you might have used a sewing machine in a zigzag, but you will still have this kind of um, seam allowance that can kind of poke out. So what you're going to do is you are going to tuck the seam allowance, like have it face the back neckline. And then I'm going to pin this with the seam allowance going back. You want to make sure that this neckline is covering the top of that seam. Just like that. So from the front is going to look completely normal. From the back, you're going to have it all tucked in and pointed this direction. We're going to just tack um, like an inch in, come down an inch, and you're doing it 1 8 inch from this seam to hold that seam allowance in place. And you're going to do it to the other side. Now we're going to sew the sleeves onto into the armholes. So you're going to take this notch and match it with the back seam, the back shoulder seam, and make sure that the seam allowance of the shoulder is going back towards the back. Then you're going to sew this seam and do the other sleeve. Once you have the sleeves sewn in, you can take the back. We're going to match up the side seams and the side seams of the sleeves and pin the edges. Make sure you match up the notch on the side. And then when you, you want this sleeve seam to um, go out towards the sleeve. And you're gonna sew both side seams So now turn the shirt right side out. Um, help these sleeves look good and um, have them more comfortable. Tuck the seam allowance towards the back of the sleeve and pin that in place. And then you're going to sew a little tack to keep the seam allowance going towards the back. Prepare the shorts, you're going to place them on top of it, each other with right sides together. You're going to match the center front curve and the center back curve. So pin this together and this together and then we're going to um, sew each seam. And there is a notch on the front and two notches on the back to help you line up those seams. your shorts you're going to open it up so that the front is on the center front is on top of the center back you're going to line up the inseam when I pin it together I like to have the seam allowances going in opposite directions so that you have less bulk down there and then line up each hem 
And we're going to sew this inseam. So turn the shorts right side out. So now to help um, this inseam be more comfortable, we're going to do the same that we did to the neckline where you are going to tuck the seam allowance towards the back of the shorts and pin it in place and then just tack it with a little stitch to keep that seam allowance going towards the back. Now we're going to sew the waist seam. You need to turn one of the pieces right side so that you can slide it like one inside the other like this. And make sure that you're matching the back of the shirt with the back of the shorts. So you're going to match the center front notch with the center front of the shorts and pin it. And then the back notch, the back of the shorts. And then the sides, you're just matching the entire waist seam together and then you're going to sew the seam and this seam is a little bit different because you are going to sew this seam at half an inch with a st straight stitch on your sewing machine. You do not have to finish the edge with the serger. You can if you want, but you really have to make sure that you sew with a straight stitch at half an inch and then you need to keep that whole seam allowance for the next step. Once this seam is sewn, you are going to turn the whole romper right side out. Now you have that large seam allowance in there and what you're going to do is you are going to um, feel with your hand inside. The seam allowance is going to be um, pushed up towards the <clears throat> shirt and you are going to sew around to secure that seam allowance up towards the shirt. You're going to sew 3 8 inch from this seam. What I like to do is I like to slide the neckline over my sewing machine arm so that I can get it in here like this and then I sew like this. When you sew, make sure that you leave a two inch hole we are creating a casing to insert the elastic. So leave a two inch hole and backstitch when you start and when you stop. Turn your romper right side in. This is the hole in the casing. I have already cut the seam allowance. And when I'm working with something like a romper that's a little trickier, um, I use the safety pin to um, put the elastic through the casing, but I also like to put a safety pin on the other side so that this end of the elastic doesn't accidentally get pulled in. And sometimes I even safety pin it to the opening so that it really cannot get accidentally pulled in. So I'm taking this side and I am inserting the elastic into the casing and I'm going to go all the way around.
So now undo the safety pins and you're going to pull both of your ends out a little bit, overlap them half an inch. I like to pin it in place. And then you're going to either sew a rectangle and an X or um, a bunch of zigzag stitches to secure these elastic ends together. Then you're going to pull on the waist and it actually kind of pulls the elastic in. Turn the wrapper right side out. And the last step is to come down to where your hole is and you're going to kind of pull that flat and sew that stitch right in between. Make sure you're not catching the elastic um, as you sew across. You want the elastic to stay down near the seam. Now the romper is finished. It has the nice elastic waist. And that's how you make the kids upcycled t-shirt romper and dress sewing pattern. I can't wait to see all of the rompers, jumpsuits, and dresses that you make. Please share them with me on social media. Check out these playlists of upcycled sewing projects and beginner sewing projects. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you have a wonderful day.